Hi everyone, my name is Andrew. Thanks for joining my tour today. I'm a five-year dual degree student in both chemical engineering and German, and here on campus I call Carroll Hall my home. But I've also been able to study abroad twice, both times in Berlin, and that was a really great experience for me. So let's get started. Notre Dame was founded in 1842 by Father Edward Zorn, a French priest in the Congregation of Holy Cross. We're in front of one of the most famous college buildings in the country, the main building, but of course we also call it the Golden Dome. This isn't the original dome because Father Soren's first building burned down in 1879. The university was still young, but instead of giving up, he said we needed to rebuild and make it even bigger and better than before. The university president and other administrative offices are in the main building. There are also classrooms in it. This quad that we're on is called Main Quad, but we call it God Quad, named after the Basilica of the Sacred Heart, which is a really, really wonderful building. It actually houses one of the largest complete collections of French stained glass in the world. On this side of the quad is La Fortune Student Center. It's one of the two student centers on campus, and we call it La Fun. On the first floor, there's a Starbucks, which is one of the most important places for me as an avid coffee lover. But there's also one of the highest grossing subways in the country, which might surprise you. And we have the only smash burger in the state of Indiana. We also have the Huddle Mart. The Huddle Mart is a convenience store with all of the essentials and a wall of candy you can buy in bulk. LaFun also has a FedEx office, a hair salon, a barber shop, a computer lab, a large ballroom for formals and dances, and we also have a good number of student resource offices with a bunch of people working together to make student life here great. Let's walk over to Getty's Hall now. We're passing the Clark Memorial Fountain that we call Stonehenge, for obvious reasons. Past it, you can see North Quad, where North Dining Hall is, and a number of other dorms. Getty's Hall is home to the Center for Social Concerns on campus, and although service is not a mandatory component of a Notre Dame education, that doesn't stop more than three quarters of Notre Dame students from participating in some form of service during their time here. I think that's largely a product of the fact that the Center for Social Concerns has so many different opportunities available. Some of the most popular are Summer Service Learning Projects, or SSLPs, and their international counterparts, ISSLPs. These projects are usually eight to 10 weeks long, and you go live somewhere either within the United States or internationally, and you volunteer within the community. They also have service programs around the United States that happen during the fall and spring breaks. Those are also really great opportunities to pursue some form of service through the Center for Social Concerns. Right next door is the Hesburgh Library. It's named after Father Ted, who was president of the university for 35 years, and he built it in 1963, to be the academic heart of the university. It's currently undergoing a major renovation and they've made it really great. We have a brand new Center for Digital Scholarship and a Mac Lab and Technology Hub. There's a great cafe in there too. Let's head down to the library quad to the stadium. When we turn around, we'll see the famous mural, The Word of Life. Although you probably thought its name was Touchdown Jesus because that's what people call it. The mural has 324 panels with 81 different stones from 16 countries. We're passing the Life Sciences Building, and next to it, Jordan Hall of Science. These are just a couple of our academic buildings. One thing that's good to know is that research opportunities for undergraduates aren't just for science students. Every college and every major has opportunities for students to work side by side with faculty researchers or designing their own project and getting it funded. So at Notre Dame, sports are actually a very big part of life. Football season is something we look forward to every year. There's just nothing like being in the stadium for the games. The next building that we're going to see is Duncan Student Center, which was built as part of the stadium expansion a few years ago. You may remember I said that La Fortune was one of the two student centers on campus. Well, Duncan Student Center is the other one. There are three more restaurants here, all of which students can use their flex points at. There's a rec center with a three-story rock climbing wall, 
a full-size running track. There's a bunch of exercise equipment, fitness studios with yoga and bar classes, and other similar things. Basketball courts, free weights, and weightlifting machines. It's a really great rec center. And then, on the fifth floor of Duncan Student Center, we have the Center for Career Development. And that's a really great resource available to students for all of their career-related needs. They have walk-in hours every single day, so if you want to go get your resume checked, just talk about research opportunities, internships, grad school, anything that might be interesting to you. After graduation, the Center for Career Development can help with that. Now we'll see DBART, or DeBartolo Hall. It's the largest and also the most general academic building on campus. So whereas most buildings, like Jordan Hall of Science or Fitzpatrick Hall of Engineering, are affiliated with a specific program or college, DBART has classroom space available to all of the different colleges. So you'll see students from all different majors in this building. Across the quad is the ceramic hall, where they have a state-of-the-art clean room that you can see from the hall on the first floor. And further down towards the entrance of Notre Dame Avenue is Jenkins Nanovic Hall. That houses our newest school, the Keough School of Global Affairs. So let's head down the sidewalk that takes us under the law school arch. Notre Dame is largely an undergraduate institution with about 8,500 undergrad students and almost 4,000 graduate students. Grad students at Notre Dame actually have a unique opportunity to engage with the undergrads, and that's in their residence halls. So every residence hall has two graduate students living in the halls among the undergrads as assistant rectors. And they're a really great resource available to students to sort of get a different perspective on whatever challenges they're facing. They're obviously great opportunities to make friends as well. I never thought as a freshman here that one of my best friends would end up being a 27-year-old law student, um, but that's how it ended up for me. Some of our most historic residence halls are here on South Quad. All of our residence halls are single sex and you live on campus for your first three years at Notre Dame. You have the choice to move off campus your senior year if you want, but most students stay in their dorms because it becomes your family. We don't have Greek life at Notre Dame, so instead your residence hall really becomes the center of your social events like dances and inter-hall sports. Each hall has a mascot and its own special events. People very quickly become very loyal to their dorms. Here on South Quad is South Dining Hall. It's one of the two dining halls on campus. Its counterpart is North Dining Hall on North Quad on the other side of campus. There's a bit of a rivalry between the two dining halls on campus. Everyone who frequents South Dining Hall strongly claims that South is the better hall. And in my mind, everyone who goes to North is wrong. In reality, the food is pretty much the same. The atmospheres are a little different because South was built in the Gothic style in 1927 and North was built in a contemporary style in 1957. North was also recently renovated. The rivalry sort of adds to the community of the people who go to each of those dining halls. The next building that we'll see is the Coleman Morse Center, or Como for short. Como is the home for campus ministry. They manage all of the masses that are held on campus, not only in the Basilica, which we saw earlier, but also in all of the chapels and the residence halls. Every residence hall has its own chapel designed to hold all of its residents as well as some guests. Guests are always welcome at these masses, and residence halls typically hold mass two or three times a week. Campus ministry also has a lot of interfaith discussion events, annual retreats, and some great student organizations. So campus ministry is obviously very, very involved in campus life. The final place that we're gonna see on the tour is the grotto. The grotto is actually a 1 7th scale replica of the grotto in Lourdes, France. There's actually a stone from the original grotto in ours, and you can see it below the Statue of Mary. The grotto is a really great place to come, reflect on the day's events, look forward to what's coming. You can sort of remove yourself physically from the stresses of college, as well as just collect your thoughts and center yourself. I find most people who visit the grotto feel a little bit better here after they leave. It's one of my favorite places here for sure. One thing that I always end up and my tours with is my little spiel about why I chose Notre Dame. It offers so much, but the one thing that makes Notre Dame really special is the sense of community. And I think that manifests itself in two ways. The first is the strength and the breadth of the alumni network. When I was studying abroad in Berlin, the first week I was walking around with my Notre Dame summer study abroad shirt on. 
and I ran into someone who said, go Irish, and talked to me about how he graduated from Notre Dame 15 years ago, he ended up moving to Germany for work, and it was really surreal to me being halfway across the world talking to someone who was just as passionate about Notre Dame as I was. I think that just goes to demonstrate how the alumni network really has no boundaries, and how alumni from Notre Dame are always willing, happy even, to talk to students who are currently attending. I think the second way that Notre Dame's sense of community manifests itself is how easy it is to find a place on campus where you feel like you belong. For many students, that's their residence hall. For others, that's a major or a minor that they decide to pursue. And for even more, it's one of the 450 student organizations on campus. But whatever it might be, it's really genuinely easy to feel like you belong here and feel like you're part of the greater Notre Dame family, which I think is really special. Thank you for listening and for coming on my tour.